Okay, so these are some short answer um, questions for solutions. Base your First of all, you should have your reference table. Base your answer to the following question on the information below and your knowledge of chemistry. A sample of normal rainwater has a pH value of 5.6 due to dissolved carbon dioxide gas from the atmosphere. Acid rain is formed when other gases such as sulfur dioxide dissolve in rainwater, which can result in lake water with a pH value of 4.6. The equation below represents the reaction of water with SO2 gas, and so you have it. Based on table G, describe what happens to the solubility of SO2 gas as the temperature increases from 10 to 30 degrees Celsius at standard pressure. Okay, so let's go to our reference table. Table G. And SO2, it's right here at the bottom, from 10 to 30. So the solubility decreases, okay? And it doesn't ask us, the question does not ask us for any numbers. So we can just say the solubility decreases. So um, solubility decreases as temperature increases. Good enough. You don't want to write too much. <clears throat> okay, a 100 gram sample of liquid water is heated from 30 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. Enough KClO3 or potassium chlorate is dissolved in the sample of water at 80 to form a saturated solution. So remember, this is on the line. Based on table G, determine the mass of KClO3 that must dissolve to make a saturated solution of, H of 100 grams of H2O at 50 degrees Celsius. So um, now we want 50. So KClO3 at 50. So erase this. So KClO3 at 50 looks like... Um, just a little bit above, maybe 21 grams, because then if you know if you were gonna go over here, something like that, 21. So I'm gonna say 21 grams. Now the answer key, according to the region, says any value from 20 to 23 grams. So you get some leeway. Okay, in a lab, investigation an HCl solution let's see oh we can't do this one this is acid base well anyways I guess we could this is a molarity by titration question um, B the times VB this was not meant to be on my solutions review it's supposed to be acid base review but um, you would do that by saying okay the molarity of the acid is 0 0.0 one zero the volume of the acid is 15 the molarity of the base is what I'm looking for and the volume of the base is 7.5 so you would just do that math but again this is <clears throat> acid base not solutions okay a bottled water label lists the ions dissolved in the water the table below lists the mass of some ions dissolved in the 500 gram sample so we've got ions and mass says show a numerical setup for calculating the parts per million of the Na plus ions in the 500 gram sample of the bottled water. So if we go back here, table T, um, parts per million is here, which is mass of solute over the mass of the total solution times a million. So Na plus, the mass of the solute is this. The mass of the total solution would be 500 gram sample um, plus the solute times 1 million. There you go. And you don't have to solve it. Based on table F, write the formula of the ion in the bottled water that would form the least soluble compound when combined with sulfate. So that is code for insoluble with sulfate. So sulfate when combined with Ag plus, these are the exceptions. So this would mean it's soluble, but this is when it is insoluble. These are the exceptions. So um, it says the least soluble 
uh, AG plus, CA2 plus, all that stuff. So let's see. Silver is not on the chart. Calcium is on the chart, so that's probably our answer. Uh, strontium is not in the chart. Barium is not in the chart, and lead two is on the chart. So we're gonna go with calcium plus two. Base your answer to the following question on the information below. At 23 degrees Celsius, 85 grams of sodium nitrate are dissolved in 100 grams of water. Based on table J, determine the additional mass of NaNO3 that must be dissolved to saturate the solution at 23 grams. 23 degrees. So 23 degrees is like here. And where is NaNO3? It's way up there. I'm going to have to zoom out. Oh, hold on. We have 85 grams. So, 85 grams. Yikes, that's not, not exactly whatever. So, 85 grams, but it looks like at 23 degrees Celsius, it's like 90. So, um, maybe a little bit less. Let me zoom in. 23, actually, 23 looks like, is it 90? Maybe 89? Well, anyways, there's going to be some leeway. So, going back to this. Oh, this is that same one. So, if it's, whoops, if it's saturated at 90 grams and we have 85, so maybe about 5 grams. The answer key gives you four to six, so five grams more seems good. Okay, a saturated solution of sulfur dioxide is prepared by dissolving SO2 in 100 grams of water at 10 degrees in standard pressure. Describe what happens to the solubility of SO2 when the pressure is increased at constant temperature. When pressure is increased, solubility will also increase. Think of a can of soda staying bubbly. Okay. Based on table G, state the general relationship between solubility and temperature of an aqueous SO2 solution at standard pressure. Didn't we have this exact question before? Pretty much. Well, it just goes to show they like to repeat themselves. So, um, so as uh, temp increases, solubility decreases. And here it is. So here's SO2 going down in solubility as the temperature increases. Determine the mass of SO2 in the solution. Okay, so it says saturated, so that means on the line, 10 degrees Celsius. So SO2 at 10, I'm gonna erase this to clean it up. SO2 at 10, 15, looks like it's about 15 to me. Maybe a little bit more, 16. So 16 grams. The answer key accepts anything between 15 and 18. Base your answer to the following. Uh, some compounds of silver are listed. Identify the silver compound that is most soluble in water. So I need reference table F. We have carbonate, chlorate, sulfate, and chloride. So table F. And I forgot all of them. <laughs> forgot all of them. Uh, let's see. So sulfates are soluble except for with um, silver. So it's not a sulfate. I remember chlorides were on there. Chloride is soluble except with silver. Um, is it, wow, chlorates. Chlorates are always soluble. And I can't remember the fourth one. Um... So, uh, so it wasn't sulfate and it wasn't chloride. So carbonate, carbonate. Oh, it's insoluble except with group one. And that's not an exception. So it's insoluble. So it has to be the chlorate. Chlorate was soluble, no exceptions. 
Uh, it says identify the silver compound, so it has to be silver chlorate. You could have write the name, the rain, the name too. Number eleven, state the physical property that makes it possible to separate a solution by distillation. This is boiling point. So you separate liquids based on their boiling point, and so one boils off first, cool and condense it, and then you've got the two separate. All right, here we go. Seawater contains dissolved salts in the form of ions. Some of the ions found in seawater are list. An investigation was conducted to determine the concentration of dissolved salts in seawater at one location. A 300 gram sample of the seawater is placed in an open container. After a week, all the water had evaporated. 10 grams of solid salt remains in the, in the container. At standard pressure, compare the freezing point of seawater to the freezing point of distilled water. So seawater has dissolved ions. So if you have dissolved ions, you're going to have a lower freezing point and you're also going to have a higher boiling point, but that's not what the question is. So we're going to say, if you want to answer the question, we're going to say seawater has a lower freezing point than distilled. Don't write a whole story about it. The truth is because there are more design more dissolved ions, it would have a lower freezing point, but it doesn't say to explain why, it just says compare them. So you could also say that distilled water has a higher freezing point. Determine the concentration as a percent by mass of the dissolved salts in the original sample. So it says, let's see, and it doesn't say that we have, uh, it, it, we have to solve it. So it looks like, okay, so percent by mass, table T, Percent composition by mass. Mass of part over mass of whole times 100. So the mass of the salt was 10 grams. The mass of the seawater was 300 times 100. So 10 divided by third 300 times 100. 3.33%. It doesn't say that we need sig figs or anything. So you could just say 3%, 3.33, 3.3, 3 whatever. Okay, a 2.5 liter aqueous solution contains 1.5 moles of dissolved sodium chloride. The dissolving of the sodium chloride is represented below. Compare the freezing point of this solution to a freezing point of a solution containing 0.75 moles. So 1.25 compared to 0.75. So 1.25 moles is going to have more ions. And whichever has more ions is going to have a lower freezing point. So the first solution is going to have a lower freezing point than 0.75 moles. Because um, there's more ions in solution, lowering the freezing point. A 2 liter aqueous solution contains a total of 3 moles in dissolved uh, ammonium chloride at 25 degrees Celsius. Standard pressure determine the molarity of the solution. This is so easy because the formula for molarity is on table T, moles solute over liters of solution. Don't trust me, look it up. But you don't even have to do anything because look, three moles, we have it already, two liters. So what's half of three? 1.5. You can say moles per liter, but nobody does. Nobody says that. Everybody says capital M for molarity. All right, so don't worry about this one. Don't worry about number three because it has to do with acid base, but everything else is good. All right, thanks.